in the previous lecture we considered fully developed flow heat transfer in circular tube or uh, flow between parallel plates under variety of boundary conditions. Uh, today, our interest is to move on to non circular ducts. Non circular ducts can be of regular shape, such as rectangular duct or an annular sector duct, as we saw in the case of fully developed flow. But the ducts of this type can be solved exactly by the methods that were described there, because you get a Poisson equation of the type d 2 t d z square plus d 2 t d y square equal to u fully developed divided by alpha into d t bulk by d x and u fully developed for a non circular duct we have already obtained as a function of x and y uh, z and y. So, when you substitute for d t bulk by d x you get uh, a Poisson equation with the right hand side which is a function of x and y and you can use Fourier series uh, to solve such problems. The interest today however, is very similar to what we saw in the lecture on uh, fully developed flow in uh, non circular ducts. There we presented a method in which uh, uh, the method could be applied to ducts of arbitrary cross sections. We are going to extend that method now to include heat transfer. The whole purpose is to, uh, to show that that method can be applied also to heat transfer and with a very special uh, provision and that is the method can be applied to any arbitrary variation of thermal boundary condition along the circumference. So, for example, uh, if I have a rectangular duct, I may have T w which is varying over the periphery, although actually the heat flux is constant, Q w is constant in the actual direction, but circumferentially T wall may vary or even q wall may vary or when we have a convective boundary condition even the heat transfer coefficient h w on the outside of the duct can vary. So, we have three possibilities of uh, uh, T w varying, q w varying or h w varying. T w varying uh, situation arises principally when, uh, when you may have a situation uh, that a certain side of the duct is made of one material where the other side is made of another material uh, that is one possibility. Q w variation can arise because you may have subjected the to, to radiant heating which can come from one side and likewise heat transfer coefficient variation can also occur if there was a say flow over this duct in which case the heat transfer coefficient would vary along the periphery, including uh, there may be uh, this can be purely convective heat transfer or it can be H convection plus H radiation uh, variation. So, both types are possible uh, and uh, effectively uh, you have H w. So, we want to be able to track quite a extensive ground today in the sense we should be able to have a method which can which can be applied to ducts of arbitrary cross section and ducts that have arbitrary circumferential variation of the thermal boundary condition. Just to recall let us look at how we solve the velocity problem for a duct of non circular cross section. Uh, this was done in lecture 16 as you will as you will recall, where we had the Poisson equation uh, with a pressure gradient constant on the right hand side and we define a velocity u by that 
uh, 1 over mu d p d x equal to u star minus z square plus y square by 4. And therefore, the Laplace equation uh, turned out to be uh, d 2 u star z z square plus d 2 u star d y square equal to 0 uh, and u star b the boundary value was equal to uh, where u is itself equal to 0 is uh, z square uh, z b square plus y b square divided by 4. And the solution to that we had shown is given by this expression that u star is equal to i equal to 1 to n uh, c i g i, but now I am calling it c u i to indicate that these coefficients were for the velocity problem and g i functions were also given in lecture 16. n represents the number of boundary points you have chosen uh, on the duct boundary. So, we will keep this in mind that this is how we had solved the velocity problem. We now turn to solving the heat transfer problem. So, let us say again I have shown the duct of arbitrary cross section with the duct boundary coordinate z b y b known and again it is also a singly connected domain as before, but the q wall or t wall or even heat transfer coefficient along the boundary may vary. The governing equation will be d 2 t d z square plus d 2 t d y square u fully developed divided by alpha the thermal diffusivity into d t bulk by d x and by overall heat balance you will see d t bulk by d x is a constant given by q wall bar d h by 4 rho u bar c p and q wall bar is the average constant heat flux uh, along the axial distance. From the definition of friction factor multiplied by Reynolds number, we can readily represent u bar as uh, uh, 0 0.5 into 1 over mu d p d x d h square f r e and the negative here implies that the d p d x is negative. So, that u bar is positive and therefore, uh, if I substitute for d t bulk by d x and u bar, then I would get d 2 t by d z square plus d 2 t by d y square equal to 8 f r e q wall bar by k d h q, k is being the thermal conductivity, d h is the hydraulic diameter multiplied by u over minus 1 over mu d p d x. And this quantity uh, we defined as u star minus z square plus y square by 4 with this as a multiplier. If I take this to the left hand side, uh, then uh, and define theta equal to t into this quantity raised to minus 1, then the equation would simply read as d 2 3 d z square plus d 2 theta by d y square equal to c u i g i minus z square plus y square by 4. Here onwards, the treatment would get somewhat complicated. So, please be attentive in, uh, in following the steps. So, I am now going to say let theta the temperature be equal to uh, some theta star plus sigma uh, i equal to 1 to n c u i the velocity coefficients multiplied by another function called g i minus z 4 plus y 4 divided by 48. This is a postulate, this is a postulate. Then you will see that substituting this into this equation would give me d 2 theta by d z square plus d 2 theta by d y square on the left hand side equal to uh, the same thing in theta star plus c u i into uh, second derivative of g i functions with respect to z plus second derivative of g i functions with respect to y square in minus z square plus y square by 4. Now, suppose I say that this quantity the second derivative of g i 
with respect to z and, and, and y, the sum of them is equal to small g i, then you will readily see that this quantity d 2 theta star by d z square plus d 2 theta star by d y star a d y square would turn out to be 0, because this is exactly equal to c u i g i minus z square plus y square by 4. Okay? So, what I am going to do now is to substitute this equal to this or, or postulate that these functions g i are exactly equal to g i. So, if d 2 g i by d z square plus d 2 g i by d y square equal to g i, then for each g i, I can generate a function g i and the solutions of that uh, are given on the next slide. But the, the consequence is that as I said in the previous slide, that it would mean d 2 theta star by d z square plus d 2 theta star by d y star equal to 0. Uh, again, I have a Laplace equation and uh, for the Laplace equation as you recall, the solutions of x plus i y raised to n are all solutions of the Laplace equation for n varying from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 up to anything and we had taken n equal to 8 in the, in the velocity problem. We will stick to that and uh, let us see what happens. So, the solution would be as before as in the velocity problem the solution now would be a i g i and theta would be a i g i plus c u i g i minus z square plus y square by 48. Okay? Uh, that is if I substitute for theta star equal to a i small g i is that right? The solution to a Laplace equation we had shown is a i g i. So, I have substituted that for theta star. So, this is theta equal to this is this term is theta star and these are the additional functions with the velocity coefficient c u i g i minus z to the 4 y to the 4 divided by 48. Now, of course, the coefficient a i uh, we will show as you move go along will be uh, different when the boundary condition for T w is given and therefore, those coefficients I have called C T w i. If the q wall varies circumferentially, the, uh, the coefficient will be called C w i and if we transfer coefficient varies, then the functions would be called C h w i. Okay? So, the a i here would could take any of these three depending on the boundary conditions that we have. So, this is our solution to the temperature equation. Let us see how we can proceed further to develop Nusselt number. But before I do that, here are the functions g i. So, g 1 is for n equal to 0, g 2 and g 3 are for n equal to 1, g 4 and g 5 are for n equal to 2 g 6 and g 7 are for n equal to 3, g 8 and g 9 are for uh, n equal to 5 and so on and so forth. Uh, and you could verify very well with the small g functions that I have. So, basically in each case, if you wanted to see uh, d 2 g 1 by d z square plus d 2 g 1 by d y square will give me uh, essentially 0 0.25 into 2 plus 0 0.25 into 2 equal to 1 and that was precisely what g 1 was if you will recall. And likewise, if I do d 2 g uh, by uh, g 2 by d z square plus d 2 g 2 by d y square, then you will see uh, this will become uh, First of all, uh, six z, six z square plus three y square plus six z plus uh, yeah, that's about it. Divided by uh, twelve, divided by twelve, and uh, 
No, sorry. Uh, this would be so. Let's say d two d g two by d z will be three uh, z square plus three uh, y square by twelve, and d two g two by d z square will be six z uh, divided by twelve. Similarly, uh, d two g two uh, d g two by d y would be uh, uh, 6 y z by 12 and d 2 g 2 by d y square will be 6 z by 12 and therefore, this quantity would turn out to be 6 z plus 6 z by 12 equal to uh, z and that is precisely was g 2 if you will recall from our uh, lecture number 16. Likewise, you can check out all of them and these are the 17 functions. The last 6 g 16 and g 17 are for n equal to 8. So, now let us begin to develop the solution for T w varies arbitrarily uh, along this duct periphery. So, here theta w z b y b is specified then uh, you will see from the solution that we have got we simply substitute uh, we can get theta w equal to all these functions evaluated at z b y b right right hand side evaluated at z b y b and that is what I have written here. So, you would get a i g i multiplied by c u i g i z b y b minus z b square plus y b square by 48. Now, as I said before in this case a i will be taken as c t w i then you will see that c t w i g i uh, i equal to 1 to n at z b y b would be equal to theta wall minus c u i into g i at z b y b and plus uh, z b y b uh, z b 4 plus y b 4 by 48 and the entire right hand side is now known at z b y b because theta wall has been specified uh, g functions can be evaluated for z b y b and c u i the coefficients from the velocity problem are also already known and therefore, the entire right hand side can now be specified. So, essentially now you again have a problem very similar to that of the velocity problem c t w i uh, g i at z b y b is equal to some function of uh, z b y b some function of z b y b and the task is to determine c t w i uh, which we will can do by l u decomposition as before next. So, uh, in this equation then uh, we determine C the T w i by L u decomposition and once C T w i are determined I get the entire temperature solution uh, as shown here. So, once C T w i are determined then I would get the temperature solution. But to determine the Nusselt number at the wall which will now vary uh, along the periphery because T w is varying along the periphery it will vary uh, uh, the heat flux would also vary along the periphery because the wall temperature is varying. Uh, in fact, the heat flux would vary uh, in a non circular duct heat flux could vary along the periphery even when T w is constant simply because the temperature profiles along the uh, say I have a duct like this even if T w was constant with respect to the periphery the peripheral distance s uh, the velocity gradients and the temperature gradients can go on varying from point to point and therefore, the heat flux itself would be uh, the local heat flux would be varying along uh, the periphery although its integral value would remain same as that specified which is the actually constant heat flux q wall bar. All right. So, let us evaluate then the temperature gradient at the wall 
it would be equal to k by d t d n at the wall, where n is normal to the wall. So, uh, q w which is coming in to the heat coming in to the uh, to the uh, into the duct would be uh, k times plus k times d t by d n at the wall, where n is normal to the boundary. And uh, you will recall from your uh, uh, first course in mathematics that a normal derivative can be split into uh, derivative along direction z and direction y multiplied by direction cosines l and m. So, I can write this as k l d t by d z plus m d t by d y at n. Basically, if you have that as the boundary and this is the n direction, then d t d n along this will be simply uh, d t d z along the uh, the z direction d t d y along the y direction and uh, d t d n would then be equal to l times d t d z plus m times d t d y where l and m are direction cosines. All right. So, that is what we do here. So, you will see uh, substituting those things here on the right hand side and therefore, if I now switch t to theta through this transformation q wall bar, uh, then uh, I will get d h cube divided by eta f r e divided by q wall bar. Remember, I had defined theta equal to that was the definition of theta, that was the definition of theta and that same thing I have substituted here to get d h cube 8 f r e q wall divided by q wall bar equal to d theta by d n equal to l d theta by d z plus m d theta by d y z b y b and theta uh, would now uh, each derivative here would be l times c t w i d g i by d z plus c u i d g i by z at z b y b plus m times c t w i d g i by d y and c u i d g i by d y z b y b minus the uh, l z cube plus m y b cube divided by 12. So, that would be the right hand side which will enable me to evaluate q w and I already know c t w i, I know d g i d y, I, I know d, uh, g i function as well as uh, small g i function and therefore, the entire right hand side can be evaluated and therefore, uh, the heat flux variation along the periphery can be evaluated. The next task of course, is to evaluate the bulk temperature u theta d x d y divided by u d x d y over the area of cross section of the duct. This is how we define uh, the bulk temperature and then the Nusselt number which is q wall over t wall minus t bulk into d h by k would be simply equal to uh, this quantity into d h by k is equal to d theta by d n z b y b d h theta wall minus theta bulk. And therefore, n u uh, this would n u t w would be the uh, will be varying along the along the duct periphery and it is uh, uh, that quantity itself is very useful, but uh, also useful is a quantity which is circumferentially average in a set number and that is what I have defined in this equation where s is a perimeter and the line integral of the set number values uh, along the periphery have been integrated with respect to perimeter. We now turn to the problem in which q w the heat flux is varying in the circumferential direction. All right. The same uh, uh, temperature solution is to be used, but the coefficients c q w i are now to be evaluated. So, if I were to uh, take q w equal to uh, is specified, then uh, the left hand side would become c w i uh, l d g i by d z plus m d g i by d y at z b y b 
equal to d h cube over this into q wall by over q wall bar plus this minus c u i l d g i by d z plus m d g i by d y z b y b and all these quantities are known because q wall z b y b has been specified actually uh, uniform heat flux has also been specified and all these functions can be evaluated which I have called gamma z b y b and L d g i by d z plus m d g i by d y at z b y b if I were to call it as f i let us say uh, these are also known functions then I would get again the velocity like problem c w q w i f i into uh, at z b y b equal to this. therefore c q w i can be determined by L u decomposition and uh, therefore the solution would be c theta equal to c q w i g i c u i from the velocity solution and this. So, I can readily evaluate theta w and knowing this I can also evaluate theta bulk. Knowing theta wall I can also evaluate theta wall bar as given and of course, q wall bar, bar will be uh, 1 over s line integral of q wall d s. Then n u for the q wall varying would be given by that again as before and the averaged uh, circumferentially averaged heat transfer coefficient uh, would be given by the expression that I have shown at the bottom of the slide. So, uh, n u q bar q w is equal to d h cube at a f uh, r e d h by theta wall minus theta bulk where theta wall is given here and theta bulk is to be evaluated in the usual manner. Now, I come to the very last boundary question that, that the heat transfer coefficient can, can be also be a function of uh, circumference uh, of the duct. So, in this case what would happen is, is, is what I have shown here. As you know the definition of q wall is k d t d n at z b y b and that would equal h w into t wall minus t infinity where h w has been specified h w has been specified and t infinity is some temperature outside the duct which is uh, which is known. Now, in this case a i would be h w i and therefore, the solution would read as theta times c h w i g i plus c u i g i z y minus this quantity theta wall would be simply that and d theta by d n z b y b h w over k theta wall minus theta infinity uh, into c h w i l d g i by d z m d g i by d y z b y b plus c u i all this this equation will now enable us to evaluate c h w i as I show. For example, this quantity would equal h w by k theta wall minus theta infinity minus the entire uh, term on the bottom of the slide. So, you can see I can now say that if I define f i equal to it is simply l d g i uh, by d z plus m d g i by d y h w g i z b y. So, f i is simply equal to what is given in the brackets. Then uh, the and the right hand side would be all this and the right hand side is known the entire right hand side is known. So, again I get a equation which is uh, uh, i equal to 1 to n c h w i f i uh, equal to z gamma times z b y b and uh, therefore, I can evaluate c h w i from which I can get theta wall as well as q wall because I can get d theta by d n. So, when the heat transfer coefficient has been specified our main objective is to discover what will be the wall temperature and the local heat flux the Nusselt number would of course, follow from it because h w is already known. So, now let me take few examples. You will recall that 
uh, for this circular segment cross section, we had already developed the velocity solution and therefore, the C u i coefficients are already known. Theta naught is the apex angle and uh, x is measured so and y is measured so and I am going to develop solutions in this case for T w variation and Q w variation along this circular segment. So, to begin with what I have done, I have simply said that over the entire periphery of this duct, T w is constant, T w is constant. Of course, T w will vary with z d t w by d z I mean x will equal d t bulk by d d x because q w is constant and therefore, therefore the uh, although the circumferential which is a specific uh, special case of arbitrary variation uh, d t wall by d x equal to d t bulk by d x uh, and therefore, actually uh, t wall will increase with x, but circumferentially the temperature is constant. All it means is that the metal of the uh, of the duct has very high heat uh, high thermal conductivity, the, so that any temperature variation is just evened out. And uh, most of the solutions uh, that are documented in literature are for this particular case of T w equal to constant and I am going to take the case of theta equal to 90 degrees as a special case. Theta equal to 90 degrees as you will recall is nothing but the semicircle, very simple semicircle. So, have a look at this uh, figure again. So, z b y b's are, are specified for all the boundaries uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, and what I have done now is only because of the symmetry from on, on both sides, I am only giving you solutions on the left side of the boundary, because the same solutions will be reproduced, because the circumferentially the wall temperature is constant. So, we expect a symmetry about uh, this y axis. So, I am giving you solutions only on the left hand side to save space uh, on this slide. So, you will see uh, minus 1, minus 0 0.99, minus 0 0.75, minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, all these are uh, on the negative side of, uh, of z and uh, so are these uh, on the negative side of z and y b is equal to uh, given this is on the sorry, on the curved side uh, top and this is where y b is 0. The direction cosines are of course, in each case uh, the same as turns out to be same and the q wall heat flux you will see uh, is, is like this. Right at minus 1 0 which means uh, this, this point the heat flux is very very small, very very small. Uh, it goes on increasing as you go towards uh, the top uh, uh, as you can see here. 0, 0, 0 is the topmost that is where it is 0 0.247. On the flat side, the heat transfer is 0 0.207 minus 1 again on the flat side again the heat flux is high here and goes on reducing. So, you have a high heat flux coming in here, uh, high heat flux coming in here and it reduces along the periphery in this direction and in this and likewise on this side as well which I have not shown by exploiting symmetry. And you will see how the Nusselt number varies uh, 0 0.023, 1.09, 4.24 and so on and so forth. Now, if I take a circumferential average of the Nusselt number that is shown in this column, uh, it turns out to be 4.02 for the semicircular duct. This value matches very well with what is published in the literature uh, in which the, the solution has been obtained by Fourier series uh, and that is uh, possible for this uh, elegant case of a relatively regular shape of theta equal to 90. Even the finite difference solution uh, for this problem gives you uh, very good agreement with this value.
So, now what I want to show is how were the coefficients C T W i, these are the C T W i coefficients uh, appear for T w equal to constant and uh, this was the case of 90 degrees that we had earlier considered semicircular cross section. This is the case of 60 degrees, this is the case of 45 degrees. This is okay. Now, you will see C 1, C 2 are 0 or C T w 1, C T w 2 are 0. C 3 is finite, C 4 is finite, 5, 6 are 0, 7 and 8 are finite, 9 and 10 are 0, 11 and 12 are finite and 13, 14 are 0 and 15, 16 are finite and so is 17 although very, very small uh, as you can see here. In each case, the circumferentially average wall uh, Nusselt number has been also been calculated and as you can see as the angle becomes smaller, the Nusselt number goes on decreasing. Uh, of course, this Nusselt number is based on hydraulic diameter. So, 4.02 is at 90 that we saw, 3.90, 3.79, 3.66, 3.04 at 10 degrees. Now, let us turn our attention to the case in which circumferentially Q wall is specified and again in this case it is q wall is constant along the circumference. So, basically it is q w q w q w is uniform uh, around the circumference. Again I have considered uniform simply because it is a case of uh, Next, uh, it is a case uh, in which uh, in which some published solutions are, are available. So, again exploiting symmetry, I am I am giving results for in this case not 90 degrees, but 60 degrees just uh, to make some change. Uh, I am considering the case of theta equal to 60 degrees uh, and these are the, the points on the curved boundary and these are the points on the flat boundary. This is the L and M. And now you can see what the wall temperature looks like. The wall temperature uh, is 0.237 minus 2 at point 1, which is the point over here T w uh, and it is the highest value. It is the highest value as you can see from the table that 237 e to the minus 2 is the highest temperature and then the temperature goes on reducing as you move towards the top of the duct and along the flat sides toward the center of the duct. This represents a hot spot. The bulk temperature in this case was 0 0.00012. So, you can see uh, how big this is this is 1.22 raised to minus 4 whereas T wall is this. It is to discover such hot spots that uh, solutions of this type are very very important because circumferentially although the heat flux is uniform wall temperature can vary and you can get uh, hot spots uh, at, at corner points. Uh, this is of great consequence both uh, for example, if you require the corner point also is a highly stressed point and if it has very high temperature with very large temperature gradients around that point, there could be cracking or thermal warping or anything of that kind can happen. So, solutions of this type are essentially meant to discover hot spots along the wall as you can see here uh, at, at, the, at all the points that I have shown. Those points close to the corner are very high temperature. If you look at Nusselt number now, it is 0 0.67 and it goes on increasing to 37.5, but look at this value of 0, 0, 0 right at the center on the flat type, flat surface. You will see 0, 0, 0, uh, y equal to 0, x equal to 0 means that temperature and you will see that at that point, the Nusselt number is negative because T wall is 0 uh, and it is less than T bulk. So, essentially all it implies is it is does not mean negative heat transfer, but simply the wall temperature is much lower 
than the bulk temperature resulting into a negative Nusselt number. Then again it picks a T wall becomes greater than. So, such things can also happen that a wall temperature actually goes below the, the bulk temperature 4.84 and 0.619 again. So, in this particular case N u bar is 1.657 for 60 degrees, uh, it is 1.6 which is the circumferentially average heat transfer coefficient. Again I have shown on this table what the coefficients are for Q wall equal to constant condition and you can see again C 3, C 4 are finite, uh, C 7, C 8, C 11, C 12, C 15, C 16 and C 17. These are the coefficient same as before for constant wall temperature, they are finite, remainder are 0 and you can see for theta equal to 90, it is the circumferentially average heat transfer coefficient is 2.78, 1.61, 1.03, 0.433 0 and for a very narrow angle it is 0.4049. You will see that the N u Q wall bar is less than N u T wall uh, for all angles. Remember we had 4.0 T 2 here, 3.90 something here and so on and so forth. So, uh, now these values have been verified by finite difference calculations also. So, uh, this is a very convenient uh, way of developing solutions for uh, uniform now, of course, uh, just to remind you, I have taken circumferentially uniform wall temperature and circumferentially uniform heat flux uh, just as special cases, but you could well have any arbitrary variation of T w and Q w and still we would get the solutions exactly in the manner I have described. I will now take a new kind of a duct for which we had earlier not obtained velocity solutions, but it is simply a duct in which the uh, unrounded side is 2 a along the x direction and, uh, and 2 b along the, uh, along the y direction. So, uh, I have chosen 14 points b is radius of the, un, of the rounded side and 2 a is the long side. Now, you will appreciate if b was equal to a, you will get a perfect circular duct and what my interest is to show you that when B is equal to A, in fact, you generate uh, the circular tube solution that we are all very familiar with. So, here is uh, uh, for different B by A, uh, I am showing you the values of C u because these were not shown earlier because I had not obtained the velocity solution earlier, but here is, is something that is shown and you will see that only 1, 4, 8 and 12 are finite. So, for 0.25 uh, I get 19.78 as the friction factor and all number product, 0.5 I get 17.23 and 1 as I said is a, is a circle or a circular duct for which only C u 1 is finite and it is F r is equal to 16. So, although this is a limiting case of the geometry that I have shown, it does predict uh, quite accurately the circular tube uh, value. For the same cases, I have considered uh, the heat transfer under constant wall temp uh, under uniform wall temperature around the duct and again you find C T 1, C T 4, C T 8 and C T 12 are finite for all of them and you can see this is 5.944, 4.73 and for B by A equal to 1 which is a circle, you will see only C T 1 and C T 8 are finite and uh, you get a value of 4.367. Remember for a circular duct, when Q W is uniform, uh, T W is also uniform for a circular duct and that is what is shown here. So, for for circular duct that is B by A equal to 1, you get uh, 
4.367 as n u t ball bar and the same value is predicted also by specifying constant heat flux as that and the coefficients turn out to be the same uh, and you will see that uh, uh, sorry uh, the coefficients in constant t wall case uh, is c t 1 is finite c t 8 is finite, but in constant heat flux case uh, only c q 8 is finite. Now, interesting case is that of 0.25 b by a equal to 0.25 and uh, uh, I have mean set number as minus 15.46. All it means is that although the heat is heat flux is finite on the on the wall and it is coming in uh, T w bar the average T w bar is less than T T bulk and therefore, you have negative the set number such things can happen uh, such thing can certainly happen in, in case of uh, in terms of non circular ducts. You will recall that I had obtained finite difference solution to a circumferentially varying boundary condition uh, of the heat flux along the circular tube yes q wall equal to a times 1 plus b cos cos theta. Uh, was the was the circumferentially varying heat flux and had obtained uh, solutions by finite difference method. Uh, those solutions I have now obtained uh, by the present method. Next, so you will see uh, here I have taken Q wall equal to Q wall bar uh, plus one plus a cos theta. Q wall bar has been specified here as 0 0.0625, and you can see. Uh, how the heat flux variation varies here and uh, how the uh, Nusset number varies exact values as calculated from that formula that I had given there and how the computed presently computed values absolute uh, agreement for when A is 0.2. When A is equal to 0.5 again there is a very very good agreement except at this point where uh, uh, the value here predicted is somewhat because of rounding off it has been printed as minus 25 or uh, 24, but actually it is minus 23.9 and uh, uh, the solution has been very well reproduced by the same by the new method. So, solutions for circumferential variation of H w are not given here this is left as an exercise that will require writing a general computer program with LU decomposition. Of course, as I said this method is extremely uh, versatile. All you need to do is write a general computer program uh, with small g functions and big g functions and a routine that will evaluate u bar and theta bulk. And uh, all you do then is to have an input uh, subroutine in which you give boundary coordinates and specify whether you want to solve for T w, T q w and H w. So, a general computer program can be written and therefore, this method turns out to be very, very this is particularly of great importance because we nowadays have uh, micro tubes in which all kinds of complex cross sections such as the moon shaped duct that I had mentioned in my earlier lectures uh, or sinusoidal duct these sort of ducts come about and therefore, this method is very, very valuable and in micro tubes you invariably get laminar flow. So, in the next lecture we shall consider developing heat transfer solutions.